Hey everyone, here's a quick tutorial on one use for the new geometry nodes in Blender that I've been playing with lately. You can see its primary use in hard surface modeling for making cutouts for intersecting objects where there needs to be a gap between the two. Kind of like in this image of an old VCR here where the buttons have little cutouts around them. Of course you could do this by modeling those holes straight into the object, but I wanted to leave them a bit more dynamic. To do this process, you'll need to be running the newest build of Blender 2.93 as of January 28, 2021. So let's get into it. Now the first thing we're going to do in a new Blender file is select everything and hit delete. Then we're going to add our primary object and we'll make this long like this, give it a bevel. Maybe give it rounded off like that. And then shade it smooth. And do auto smooth. So we've got our basic object that we want to have as our, our main block. So we were going to call this block. Then we want to put a button on our block. So let's create a button. A cube here. And I'm going to scale it down, perhaps like this. Bevel this as well. And again, I'll auto smooth this and shade smooth. Now, if we look at this in rendered mode we see these two objects intersect directly and that's really not what we want we want there to be a gap around this button just a slight gap but one nonetheless so to accomplish that the first thing we're going to want to do is select both our objects and apply all of our transforms always a good idea um, when you're working on things like this uh, it's it's really easy to get the transforms out of whack and you start getting weird uh, artifacts or weird uh, weird scaling when you go to add modifiers I always like to go ahead and apply my scale another thing that you're going to want to do here is with both of them selected go up to object set origin origin to geometry now both of the objects are centered around their own geometry now to go ahead and start adding in our cutout we're going to add a node tree to our block while we're at it, I'm just going to take our, this cube and name it button, just for reference later. I'm going to change this bottom area into a geometry node editor, select my block, and add a new geometry node tree. Currently, if we go over to the modifiers panel, we see that we have one modifier. So it's taking the input of this modifier, and that comes in the group input. Whatever happens here then comes out the group output and that's the output of this, uh, this geometry node modifier. So if you add more modifiers later, they'll be affected by this node tree. So what we want to do, in essence, is take this button, expand it, and then use that expanded button to do a difference boolean with our block. So here's how we're going to accomplish that. The first thing we need to do is we need to reference this button in our block's geometry node tree. So we'll come here. We'll go to Input, Object Info, and then we will choose the button object for that. Now, we can replace the geometry of our main object with the geometry of our button. Now, what you'll notice is because this is at original position, it puts it at the origin of the old block with the geometry of the button. So if we go here, and add a geometry transform to the node tree and adjust the scale, you'll see that it expands around the origin of our original block. If we change this to relative mode, the location of the new geometry is at the location of our button. But here's the trick. 
when I change the scale, it still uses the original geometry's origin to do the scaling, not the relative position. This is a tricky bit. So I can't expand it from here the way I'd like. So in talking with the geometry nodes developer, he helped me come up with a solution to do exactly what I wanted to do. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this in original mode and we're going to increase its size just a little bit. So we're gonna say maybe 1.2 for our scale. So now this is slightly larger. Then what we wanna do is we wanna take the relative position, we're gonna take a new transform node and we're gonna take the location, rotation and scale of the original and apply it to the geometry that was affected by this node. So what that has the effect of doing is moving our enlarged button into the location and rotation and scale of our, of our button. So now if we change our button, rotate it, it does what we want. But this isn't what we're going for. But however, this is what we want our cutout to be. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take our original block geometry. I'm gonna add a mesh Boolean. And I'm gonna subtract this new larger button from our original geometry. And I will say difference. And there we go. Now, we can take this a little further. If I go ahead and I pull back this group input back here, what I can do is I can take my object output and drag it up to my group input. I can then also feed that into this other object. Now, if I have a second object, button.001 here, I can change this and dynamically change which object is getting the cutout. Or even better yet, I could come here, duplicate this node tree, and change that. And now, each button has its own node tree, copy of this same node tree that's affecting it. And you'll notice that I can change these around and they will do what I want. But let's take it a step further. What if you want control over the size of these cutouts? Well, as we saw, the scale option in this transform node is actually what's controlling the size of that enlarged button. What we can do is we can take this, drag this up, and now you'll see that the scale X, Y, and Z are put into each one of these. So we can control this from outside. So here, if I just wanted this one to be wider this way, deeper, taller, or I could grab all three like that. So now when I go ahead and go into rendered mode, I see that I've got nice looking cutouts for my buttons. The beauty being that these are completely procedural. However, there is a catch and you can see it here. Since this cutout is based off scaling of the original object, if the button is not uniform around the origin, you will get some effects like this. I could always go back and do set origin, origin to geometry. Now, because this one is now wider than it is tall, this is where I could come in and change the width on this one to match a little better on the X axis. Now, once geometry nodes have a solidify node, that will take care of this transform business for us. Um, and then 
we'll be able to just solidify an object out a little bit and then subtract that from the parent object. I'm really looking forward to that as an option, but for right now, this is a way that you can make this happen. And of course, again, you can always duplicate this, duplicate this node, and off and away. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this is helpful. Hopefully we'll be back again soon with some more Blender tips. Thanks a bunch.